watching Dr. Pepper Championship Week. 106 years ago, they started playing football at this wedged-in campus stadium. That's a long time to wait to finally find out if the sport changes for the little guy, for Cincinnati. The college football playoff has been an exclusive club for the select few familiar names. Now come the Bearcats, ready to crash through that postseason door. They are the unbeatens, filled with All-Americans and pro prospects, led by a record-setting quarterback and an in-demand coach. Proven on the road against the bluest of blue bloods. But now one last hurdle. A red-hot opponent with a stingy defense and their own determined title-seeking stare. Can Cincinnati throw their best playoff punch? We find out right now. It is a beautiful December day here in Cincinnati as we welcome you to the American Conference Championship on ABC. Presented by Arby's. Nippert Stadium about to host the most important game it ever has. Number four undefeated Cincinnati. Number 21 Houston. The American Conference Championship and so much more now on the line. Good afternoon everybody. Thrilled you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Greg McElroy. Oklahoma State lost in the Big 12. So now it is win and you are in for Cincinnati. You remember the classic underdog movie Hoosiers right before the big moment when they said let's win for all the small schools that never had a chance to get here. That's what college football has always been. There's been no room for Cin Cinderella. There's been no access point. So now it's <laughs> unique pressure right here on Cincinnati. Yeah, this one's for you. The 1998 Tulane team. The 2004 and 2008 Utah teams, the great TCU teams, and of course, the Boise State teams, and of course, I can't forget UCF. This team and this opportunity is for you. This Cincinnati team has the weight, not just of the world on their shoulders, but the hopes of 65 different group of five programs that are rooting for them today against a very difficult opponent in the Houston Cougars. This atmosphere at Nipper is incredible. A day that generations have waited for. Our star quarterback, Desmond Ritter, awaits his moment. Bearcats have won 15 straight conference games. You talk to those around the program this week, the chatter isn't about Bama. It's not about the what ifs, the how will it play out. It's about this team and this moment right here. Locked in with the biggest of stakes ahead. Luke Fickle's done a masterful job. Here's Katie George with Coach. Thank you, Tess. Coach Fickle, your team is playing to make history today. What was your final message to them before taking the field? We're playing to win a championship. That's what we set out to do. Everything else take care of itself. We got a game to win and a championship to win. Your team has responded to the best challenges this season. Notre Dame, SMU, now you face Houston, a top 25 team. What's the key to starting fast? we got to play well up front. I mean, the, the game is going to be won up front. This is going to be a game of the trenches all day. Thank you for the time. Jess? You know, Katie mentions it there. They had the schedule that they knew would prove it, Greg, at Notre Dame. The road test against the Big Ten and ranked teams in conference like this Houston squad that had a week one turnover-filled stumble then is torn through everybody. Yeah, and it's a great team, too. You heard Coach Fickle a second ago. In the trenches, that's what jumps out when you watch Houston, but they also have those talented playmakers that they've always had. And it really starts at their running back position. The true freshman, Alton McCaskill, this guy is sensational. He looks the part. He's six foot and change, 210 pounds. Turned down offers, legitimate offers, to SEC schools, at the Big 12 schools, to stay at home in Houston. He's been sensational in leading this balanced attack with Clayton Toon in the backfield. But of course, you reference the balance and the speed and electricity at wide receiver, it's going to go through Nathaniel Dell. This young man, more affectionately known as Tank, not the biggest guy in the world, about 155 pounds, but against a team in Cincinnati that majors in man coverage, he's going to have plenty of opportunity to work out of the slot. He's going to have to be big today and create explosive plays to the air. It has been a tremendous turnaround for Dana Holgerson's team, 3-5 and five a year ago. 11 and one now, eight game turnaround in the win column. The Houston Cougars, confident, 
ready. Dana Holgerson, year three, has them where they want to be. And these fans here have been near the top with their team before. They were the great teams of the past generation. Sugar Bowls, coaches taking the ride up with Cincinnati, getting the bigger jobs. This is something far different at Nippert Stadium in Cincinnati today. This is the big one. This is potentially the ultimate prize. We don't talk about goals. We don't talk about the, th the bigger pictures of the things within our program because we really kind of focus on the objectives. We've had a target on our back all season and uh, every game we're going to get everyone's best no matter who we play. So that's kind of how we've been playing all season. From day one we walked in, it was all about playing for championships and an opportunity to win a championship. And you know, when you reach one of those goals, it really means everything to you and your entire program. What a day to be with us watching the American Conference on ESPN. Folks, think about the great quarterbacks of all time in the sport. Some familiar names and then some names that perhaps you wouldn't think about. Desmond Ritter is number three, Katie, all time in wins in college football. Well, Tess, they say to leave a place better than you found it. When Desmond Ritter got to Cincinnati in 2018, the Bearcats wanted to be a mainstay in the American. They wanted to contend for conference championships year after year. Now as his college career is coming to a close, Cincinnati is headed to the Big 12 and playing for the first group of five berth in the college football playoff. It's a legacy and impact he's extremely proud of, but Ritter told me, guys, there's still a lot of football to be played and history to be made. Constant roar has started here as they have shoehorned 40,000 into Nipper. Cincinnati won the toss. They elect to defer. Marcus Jones is back as the kick returner. Alex Bales, the kickoff specialist. Marcus Jones is tied for the NCAA career lead with nine return touchdowns. Six kickoffs, three punt return touchdowns in his Houston career. And here is Jones. And Jones gets past the first wave and makes the most of it out towards the 30-yard line. 28-yard return. Clayton Toon is the two-time team captain for Houston, the quarterback with 26 passing touchdowns on the year. Is from Carrollton, Texas. Dana Holgerson feels that he has taken that next step that comes with year three. Greg, you already pointed out the sensational freshman who flanks him in the backfield, Alton McCaskill, number 22, who has 16 rushing touchdowns. You expect a heavy dose of him. Yeah, they're going to have to keep this defense honest by rushing it between the tackles. Tune with time to open the game, and he's able to get it complete to Jake Herslow. Jake Herslow, the walk-on transfer, who has really blossomed as the season has worked along. And keep an eye on 87. They'll move him all over the formation. He's involved in the run game. He's almost like one of those hybrid tight end wide receivers that will be very much a factor in all facets of the game. Dana Holgerson said, man, I wish I had another year with this young man. He's been outstanding. 15 yards there, 10 yards after the catch. McCaskill on a first down run, and he catches a seam. Oh, McCaskill. Finally taken down by Arquan Bush. 18-yard run for the freshman. And a great job by the left side of this offensive line. There's really nobody there in the gap for Cincinnati, and Houston takes advantage of it. But they were able to secure both edges. And McCaskill, the talented back, you see the speed in the open field, and he finishes strong at 210 pounds. Two plays, 33 yards so far for this Houston offense. Play action, tune over the middle, complete to Tank Dell. And Houston is in rhythm early. Van Fossen made the tackle, but 22 more yards with that reception. And a beautiful start so far from Dana Holgerson involving his playmakers, the guys that have to be difference makers in this ball game. They already have touches. You've already gotten them started. 
And now they're knocking on the door here in the red zone. McCaskill. As he is chased down the line and tackled by Jawan Briggs, the transfer from the University of Virginia. When you watch this Cincinnati defense, they are very talented. They're huge. They have great length. And if you look at how they've started most of their games, obviously been outstanding on the opening drive. So rare territory here for the Bearcats as their back is against the wall. Tune. Second and nine, they pick up the pressure to the end zone. He goes, but well overthrown beyond the intended target, Tank Dell. And so far, you can already see Houston. They were concerned about the length and the talent of this secondary. So they're going to use some motions. They're going to use some shifts. And they're going to get into some stack and bunch alignments to get some of their wide receivers in one-on-one -on -one to avoid the press coverage that Cincinnati does so well. Third down and nine. Pressure off the edge, and they get to tune as he is torn down by Curtis Brooks. Taylor and Brooks coming in and bringing down Clayton Toon on third and nine since he has the sack. Yeah, and you're going to see the offensive guard on the right side for the Houston Cougars slide down inside, which allows a free rush by Brooks. And nobody's there. Toon has no chance with free rusher also coming off the left-hand side. Just a bust in protection and the overload pressure by the Bearcats. Dalton Witherspoon, 37-yard field goal. And that gets our championship afternoon started. Opening drive went seven plays, 50 yards for upset-minded Houston. Three zip. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. American Conference Championship trophy. They are hoping that it stays right here and that it comes with a visit to the college football playoff. And with what happened in the Big 12 earlier today, this is now a win and you're in for Cincinnati. Trey Tucker back to return the Bubba Paxa kickoff. Tucker had a 99-yard touchdown return earlier this year. It's from about the one. Good coverage downfield by Houston. Desmond Ritter is the all-time leader in American Conference total yards and touchdowns responsible for. And he's the guy that makes this whole offense go. When you see this group, they're a little bit different. They play to their own style with two tight ends. It's not often that you see two tight end formations in the American Conference. That's their calling card. It's a physical offense, but it starts with the quarterback. When Ritter's on his A game, this offense can at times be unstoppable. Ritter takes his time and then out of the backfield is Jerome Ford and Katie. He's been dealing with a bad ankle. He has, guys. For the last three weeks, Ford has been dealing with an ankle issue and playing on grass at ECU a week ago did not help matters. But offensive coordinator Mike Denbrook said that over the last few days, Jerome finally looked like Jerome again and he expects his star running back to have a big day today. And he's very talented, great between the tackles, but as you can see there, will also factor in to the passing game as well. 17 yards on that reception. And now on the ground as he tests the right side and gets it out past the 40-yard line, tackled by Deontay Anderson. And when you look at Cincinnati, they don't look like your typical group of five football team. Across the board along the offensive line, they don't have a single offensive lineman that's under 300 pounds. They don't have a single offensive lineman that's under six foot three. Is a big, imposing offense that loves to establish the line of scrimmage and then take shots over your head with their talented wide receivers. 
Second four, Ritter to the near side, and he gets the completion for a first down to Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker, who, as we told you, has that track speed. You see them use him in jet sweep action as well. Tucker will have a huge part in this game. He'll be in the slot. And then on the outside, you'll see Alec Pierce. That's number 12. He's really the go-to guy in the passing game, and he has a tendency to play at his best in the biggest moments. Had a huge game against Notre Dame. Is trying to do so again here against a ranked Houston team. He's their big-bodied guy. There's Ritter on an RPO, and this goes to Wiley, and Josh Wiley, one of the two very athletic tight ends who's able to turn the corner as Cincinnati, you blink, and they're all the way down to the 25-yard line. 17 yards for Josh Wiley. And this was really nice. He just works across the formation, and look at Houston just sell out against the run. As soon as he's able to jump leverage, Ritter is able to walk away and essentially just toss it right out there into the flat for an easy completion and a really nice start for this Cincinnati offense. Four plays, 57 yards already. Ritter with time to the end zone. Touchdown, Bearcats, Tyler Scott. What a start for this Cincinnati offense. A good catch there as Scott made it a little bit more difficult than he had to be, but a beautiful throw, an excellent start. Christian Lowry tacks on the extra point. Tyler Scott, he's got pure speed. Ran a 10 600 meter in high school. And Desmond Ritter, all the career accolades, add another touchdown to the list. Cincinnati playing for it all today, up 7-3. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. That was last year's American Conference win against Tulsa. Cole Smith had a game-winning field goal. He was carried off the field. He's actually struggled this year. We've seen three different kickers for Cincinnati. And that touchdown drum taking a beating from Tyler Scott, who just had the 25-yarder to give the Bearcats the 7-3 lead. Had 11 total plays from scrimmage so far in this championship game. Seven of them have been for 10 or more yards. Houston came right down the field, got stopped on third down with the sack, settled for the field goal. Ritter came right down the field with Cincinnati and hit Scott. Remember, Marcus Jones is oh so dangerous as a return man. Jones going to try to get to that edge twisting and turning his way before he is met near the 25. Let's go back to this touchdown. It's just perfect execution. You have double coverage on the grab post. That's exactly what Trey Tucker runs, which allows one-on-one -on -one and a perfect route by Scott to the outside. Look him fake to the outside, give a hard slam, an indicator for his quarterback, and Ritter drops it on the money. Just perfect execution to take advantage of that post safety. And anytime you can get one on one against a guy that can run sub 1100, you're cooking with gas if you're the Bearcats. Little Tank Dell is in the backfield with Clayton Toon, and now he empties out on first down. Toon looks that way, pumps, and now tries to extend and gets it over to the sideline back to Tank. Right there, you see Dana Holgerson. Incomplete, they're saying, with Dell out of bounds. Yeah, another example in which Dana Holgerson is trying to get Dell uncovered. Uh, starting him in the backfield makes it very difficult for Cincinnati to have a guy on him that they want to cover him with. For instance, they can't take Kobe Bryant or Ahmad Gardner, Sauce Gardner. They don't want to line them up in the box. So you're essentially getting Dell working against a lesser cover guy. Henry motions into the backfield on second and ten. He will test the middle. 
and goes at for four yards, which is what Dana Holgerson said to us yesterday, Greg. He said, patience in four yards, that is the answer against the Cincy defense. Absolutely. you got to go right at them, he said as well. The team that's played them best the last couple of years in this conference has been Tulsa. They said Tulsa's main motivation when they've tried to score points against the Bearcats, be aggressive and continue to fight at the line of scrimmage. Third and seven. Toon. He's going to tuck and run, and he's going to pick up the first down. Now, it's interesting. Toon has been dealing with a hamstring injury this year, and the coaches actually say it's the best thing that happened to him, but he can go. He absolutely can. This guy's a 4-5, though, in the 40 when he's at 100%. Just a poor job there by Cincinnati in their integrity with their rush lanes. When you have a quarterback that's mobile, you cannot overrush the quarterback. Great job there by Houston and being able to extend this drive. You say, how can that be the best thing for him to have a hamstring injury? They said because it forced him to sit back and make reads, make throws <laughs> rather than always escaping. But you can see what he can do when healthy. Mike Haskell, just two yards there. Yeah, sometimes when you're a little limited and you don't have that athletic ability and you're forced to operate from the pocket, you are forced to learn how to diagnose from the pocket, and that makes you a more well-rounded player. So it's well documented that within this program, Clayton Toon, this is year three now as a starter. He was bound to take the next step, and he's done a great job with his accuracy and his decision-making throughout this year. Second and eight, they run into the pressure and swarmed and taken down by Deshaun Pace. They think he's the future defensive star of this team, and he came knifing in against McCaskill, a loss of one. Man, and how quick did he get in the backfield, coming all the way from the backside, working against Patrick Paul, the left tackle. And he drags McCaskill down quickly before he can even get started. Third down and ten, pressure straight up the middle. Toon has to escape it. And then a diving effort right before going out of bounds that time by Jake Herslow. 14 yards and a first down for Houston. What a throw by Toon and a great escape. And how about Herslow dropping that knee down, securing the catch. Of course, he secures it there, elbow down, knee down. Just an excellent job there by the senior, knowing where he's at on the field and giving himself up to secure the catch. Fourteen yards on third and ten. Now pass midfield, and read option is two, keeps it, and just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Sanders and Pace with the tackle there. And those are the plays that you have to make if you want to have consistent success against Cincinnati. They're really good in the pass rush, so you have to be able to extend plays. you got to be able to play off schedule. And that's exactly what Toon's done on consecutive third downs. Just a great job by the third-year starting quarterback. Pascal picks up the pass protection. Downfield again to Herslow. What has this guy turned into? Three seasons at Old Dominion. Calls up Houston and says, I want to play for you. Let me be a walk-on. Let me do anything. And he's turned into their high energy, their spark of late. Always something to prove. And he's been over-delivering down the stretch of this season. Yeah, he's very dependable. And he's going to have to be big today, too, because he's going to draw right now He's going to draw the third best cover guy for the Bearcats. Top two are likely going to cover Dell and Singleton, so he's going to have to have a big day working more often than not against Arquan Bush. Dell motions out to the near side. Tune on first down, looks back that way, and is able to find him for yet another first down against this extremely talented defensive backfield of Cincinnati. Well, guys, if you couple the hamstring injury with the Texas Tech loss at the beginning of the season, Toon was heavily criticized in the media and by fans. But Dana Holgerson's trust in Toon never wavered. His teammates' trust in him never wavered. Guys in the locker room like Tank Dell started the slogan, In Toon We Trust, to have his back. Toon told me he appreciated the support and the belief. He kept his head down. 
kept his trust in his teammate, weathered the storm, and now he's playing for an AAC title. Clayton Toon in tune. There was movement up front. Cincinnati defensive lineman came into the neutral zone, and then the offensive line on that left side reacted. Offside. Defense. Number 99. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's Marcus Brown, six-year guy, took the extra COVID year to play again. Well, when you think about trust that Katie just referenced, how about this trust? Here's a quote from After Dana Holgerson where he said, year three is usually when they turn the corner. I'm not doing a very good job coaching if he's not better in year three. That was Dana Holgerson back in August, and that's exactly the type of ownership and leadership you want from a head coach that specializes in coaching the quarterbacks. And he's been beyond better, especially in the big games. First and five after the penalty. Look at the time he has, and look at the throw and catch. Tank Dell, touchdown Cougars. Great job up front by the offensive line, giving Toon plenty of time. As Dell working on the post on the outside, what a catch by the talented slot receiver. Clayton Toon, two for two on third down on that drive. Ten play, touchdown drive. Tank Dell, 12 touchdowns on the year now. And Houston. A three-point lead on number four Cincinnati here in the title game. Hey, Pitt and Wake Forest are coming up in the ACC championship game, 8 Eastern on ABC. Greg, let me tell you, Kenny Pickett, the quarterback from Pittsburgh, 40 touchdown passes this year. He's been dynamic. He's awesome. Awesome. And then on the other side, not to be outdone, Sam Hartman for Wake Forest. He does a great job in Dave Clawson's scheme as well. So that's going to be, I think, a pretty high-scoring affair there in, I guess, the other Queen City. If Cincinnati's Queen City 1, is Charlotte Queen City 2, which, I don't know. Which one's officially no, the Queen be City? royalty when it comes to <laughs> college quarterbacks this season. You mentioned Hartman and Pickett. Hartman's got 34 passing touchdowns himself. Trey Tucker on the return for Cincinnati. He's met hard at the 21-yard line. And this touchdown is going to go down on Tank Dell's stat sheet, but this is all done by Dana Holgerson. This is just a beautiful job of creating a favorable matchup. Look at the motion. They get Dell all the way across the formation, and they get him matched up one-on-one -on -one with a safety. And then they run a post against the safety. This is Javon Hicks. And that's advantage Cougars all day long. If you get that matchup against the likes of Ahmad Gardner or against Kobe Bryant, that's one that's advantage Cincinnati. But you get it against the safety, your slot receiver is going to win that every day of the week. Houston are with 119 total yards in this game. Jerome Ford, big seam. Jerome Ford is revving and tearing it up. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock said to us the other day, you know, as for that ankle, I got to tell you, he looks good this week. He looks real good. 79-yard rocket ride through the Houston defense. Offside. Defense, number 10. After this is the goal, retry. What an answer by Cincinnati. Bang the drum, young man. I think that ankle's feeling all right, guys. The one that we were worried about, I think he's all right. Long touchdowns, that is what Jerome Ford does. Now has four career 
touchdowns over 75 yards. Had a 75-yarder last year in the Peach Bowl against Georgia as well. It's a thing of beauty here on the counter. I want you to watch Jeremy Cooper retrace as the defender goes vertical. Look at 74, the left guard. Retrace, goes up, and then there's nothing there between Ford and the goalpost. Just beautifully blocked. Great seams there by the Cincinnati offensive line. And he's 88 and out the gate. Just an excellent response there by the Bearcats offense. Guys, Luke Fickle says guys like Jerome Ford, Alec Pierce, they're momentum guys. When Pierce goes up and wins a 50-50 ball, it's not just a catch, energy is created. He said it's the same way when Jerome breaks a tackle and runs the ball 70 yards downfield like we just saw. He said guys like that create energy and momentum that the entire team feeds off of that can ultimately change the trajectory of a game. This place is rocking right now. 14 to 10. Cincinnati back up. From the nine yard line comes Jones. And he is chased down at the 27. Taco Bell welcomes you to the Live Moss Student Section of the Year contest. Use hashtag student section sauce. And get the committee's attention. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. It is amazing. I mean, we were here last year for the game. Obviously, it was a nip at night environment, but there was nobody here. What a difference a year makes. These fans, they can feel the moment, and they're making the most of it. Their offense was six plays and 116 yards on those six plays. Henry. Lowers the pads, turns ahead out to the 31 yard line. Joel DeBlanco comes up with the tackle. It's been around a long time. Six year player, grew up out in the state of Washington and went cross country, finished up high school at IMG in Florida. And now here, a grad student at Cincinnati. And they have a very talented front seven. DeBlanco, of course, one of the biggest names. Darian Beavers, what a revelation he's been, number zero. One of the best defensive players in America. And then, of course, up front, MyJ Sanders providing the edge pressure, number 21 at the bottom of your screen. As orbit motion with Henry coming around tune, but he goes underneath to Singleton for a first down. On second and six, they convert to Jeremy Singleton, who hasn't had the production he expected to have this year. Eight yards on that catch. It's a very similar play to Houston ran on the first play of the game, a completion, a really nice completion to Herslow. So they're going to have to make an adjustment, Cincinnati is, to that little under, under route to number three when Houston gets in that trips alignment. Two. He's going to run it himself, and he's smart to slide down at the 43-yard line. Four yards there. Beavers was tracking. So far, I like Houston's plan offensively. Dana Holgerson's done a really good job of creating favorable matchups. They've been, for the most part, fairly efficient on first down, where you get in real trouble against Cincinnati. It's when you get in obvious passing situations and you get off schedule. If you get off schedule, they can pin their ears back and heat you up. So far, Houston's been fairly methodical. Second and six. Here's the receiver screen at Tank Dell, who goes to the outside of the block and is able to get to that line to gain as he's out at midfield. And that's another first down for Houston. Here five for Luke Fickle. Worst part of national championships at Ohio State. Now trying to make the college football playoff, trying to become the first team beyond the Power Five to make it to the CFP. A win and you're in scenario after Oklahoma State was defeated by Baylor in the Big 12. McCaskill straight up against the middle of that Cincinnati defense. And that moves the chains with 11 yards.
I want you to look at number 73. That's Johnson. Does a good job of locking up. Might have gotten away right there. You see that left arm? Might have gotten away with a slight hold. But either way, another productive run play on first down for Houston. Play action, a gap pressure, and they get to him. Joel DeBlanco with the sack of Clayton Toon. Second sack of this first quarter for Cincinnati. Well, he says, you're going to hold me. I'm just going to blow right past you. That's exactly what happened here. Same matchup as they overload the pressure. Houston has guys to block them. But Cincinnati wins the one-on-one. -on -one. Just an excellent job by DeBlanco as he drops Toon for a rare negative play on first down. Makes for a second and 18. Design quarterback run, Toon. As Toon is able to slide at the 37-yard line, gets some of it back, and he goes for 10 yards there. High energy first quarter. It was Houston who got on the board first, came right down the field and had the field goal drive. But man, oh man, did Cincy answer. Ritter hit Scott. Dell came up with a big touchdown and then Ford just blasted off. We'll return after this message. The American Championship presented by Arby's. First a word from our ABC stations. American Conference Championship here on ABC presented by Arby's, part of Dr. Pepper's Championship Week. 14-10 Cincinnati to start the second quarter. Commissioner Mike Oresco is going to be handing that out at the end of the day. And if it goes to Cincy, it's going to come with a college football playoff celebration. Third down and eight for Houston to start this second quarter. Clayton Toon with time but without options so he's forced to run and he's going to dive three yards short of the line to gain tackle by Darian Beavers. And you got to think Houston right now knowing that their defense hasn't done anything of significance so far got to expect them to go four down territory anytime they get into plus territory like this Let's see if they can work Tank Dell he's been the playmaker so far let's see if they hide him move him motion him I'd be surprised if he's in the game, this ball went anywhere other than number one at the bottom of your screen. McCaskill motions out to the outside of Dell. Fourth down and three. Toon shallow cross to Dell, and Dell will get that corner with those fleet feet and a first down and a fourth down conversion for the Cougars. This is just a great job here. They're really running a mesh concept. Now, Defenses would call this a pick. Offenses call this a mesh. You see number 85, that's Trahan. He essentially takes out the guy that's in coverage on Dell. That's well executed by Houston. The one that Bearcats would love to have had an offensive pass interference. Dell's been targeted seven times already. Nothing happening for McCaskill, but a flag is down as DeBlanco comes up with yet another tackle. See the frustration with Coach Holgerson. Holding. Offense. Number 72. Ten yards from previous spots. Replay first down. It's a young right guard, Tank Jenkins, who... You know, they'll tell you he'll still coming into his own a little bit. One of the younger guys on the offensive line. They like his upside a lot. But he can't make many mistakes in a spot like this against a team like this. Undefeated Cincinnati playing for everything at home. Right here, usually when Houston gets behind the sticks, they'll use quarterback runs. They'll look for maybe a quarterback power or a quarterback draw here from two. From McCaskill on first and 20 after the penalty, and just a gain of one there as Brian Cook did an excellent job from that safety position of playing in the box. Very nicely done there. 
McCaskill just a little too much time at the line of scrimmage and Cook drops him for a short gain. Let's try it again. Let's see if it's quarterback run here because that's been effective for Houston so far today. Second and 19. Remember the holding penalty backed him up. Two and a lot of time to find something. Goes to the end zone and reaching up for it but incomplete was Jeremy Singleton. The third and 19. Brian Cook again involved. He had coverage. I like the try. I usually don't like throwing just Hail Marys on second and long, but he gave his wide receiver a chance, threw it up. Maybe he high points the football. Don't hate the matchup there from Houston. That was a decent find, just a disappointing result for the Cougs. They bring four after two, they go underneath to Tank Dell, and that'll shave something off for a field goal attempt by Dalton Witherspoon. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more manageable. That was a good job there by Toon. Understanding the likelihood of picking up a third and 19, incredibly slim. Can't take a negative play, just get the ball out of your hands and make your field goal kicker just a little bit better. Dalton Witherspoon, who took over the job as a redshirt freshman in week two of 2018. He's been a four-year starter, one of the most decorated scorers in Houston history. 46-yard attempt to cut the lead to one. Great contact and right down the middle. 46-yard field goal for Dalton Witherspoon. Lane Wilkins put it down, laces out, up and in, and it's a 14-13 game here in Cincinnati. Great guest list for the Mannings tonight. You've reached Peyton and Eli, leave a message. This is Liam Neeson. I have a very particular set of skills, none of which involves watching game film. Watch Peyton and Eli, you never know who will drop by. Peyton and Eli, Monday Night Football coming your way at 8 o'clock. A lot of pro prospects on this field tonight. So many senior bowl invitees for Cincy, six of them getting ready for the NFL draft, but so much to still worry about here. Houston, by the way, time of possession, 15.46 to just two and a half minutes for Cincinnati. Trey Tucker. Trey Tucker, dangerous return man, all the way out to the 45. Flag comes down at the end. Could be horse collar at the end of that special teams tackle. 37-yard return. First with that. Horse collar tackle. Number 31, the kicking team. 15 yards. From the end of the return. First down. Both these teams just such dynamic return guys. As you can see, Tucker getting to the open field, well blocked. And just right there, grabbed on the back. As you can see, grabbing the horse collar, grabbing the nameplate, anything that you pull backwards, as we also have our rules official, three times Super Bowl referee, John Perry. You guys are two for two on this call. <laughs> Live speed, anything up north, above the nameplate, horse collar tackle. Player safety, good get by the officials. So they start from the Houston 40. Ritter wants every bit of it, and it is denied at the last second by Williams. Alec Pierce, the intended target. Big body downfield. I like the aggressiveness. You have the six foot three Pierce working against Williams. He has four inches on him. Little contact there, but I like it. Championship setting. Had they thrown the flag, I would have understood it. But I'm fine with them allowing it to be a little bit of a bang bang play there on the deep pass by Ritter. That was his first incompletion of the game. And a swing it to Montgomery. Montgomery. 
Well blocked, and then he lowers the shoulder inside the 25-yard line. Ryan Montgomery. And they just have it all going today for Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator. They right now are forcing Houston not just down the field, stressing them vertically, but also stressing them horizontally there. Take a shot downfield on first down and basically do the toss sweep to the field on second down. Another big play for the Bearcats offense. This is just their fifth snap in Houston territory, and yet they're having this kind of a day. Ritter inside the 10. It'll be first and goal Bearcats. And now there's a fight on the near side at the end of that play, and quickly the officials are separating the action between Marcus Jones and Alec Pierce. And smart that those two got up and stopped the antics because they are absolutely critical to each team. And it was a good job, too. Nothing extracurricular. Pierce just won the block. Just happened to be outside the white lines. He really slammed him down there at the end. Nothing crazy. It was all within the whistles. So a good job by those two excellent playmakers. Not letting, letting cooler heads prevail, at least for the moment. 13 yards from Ritter. First and goal. Ritter to the end zone and trying to wrestle it in was Pierce, but Jones denied him. That is a fascinating matchup to watch today. Man, and Jones just five foot eight, drawing the difficult assignment, giving up a lot of height. Of course, as a quarterback, you love that matchup, but the undersized Jones doesn't give up on it, plays strong all the way through and pulls the ball free at the very end. Just a massive height advantage in favor of Pierce, and one that if I'm Cincinnati, I'm gonna to continue to try to work that matchup all day long. See that size advantage with the press coverage, 5'8 against 6'3? Ford can't find anything. He's wrapped up by Mutant. Well, guys, if you remember at the beginning of the week, Marcus Jones told his defensive coordinator, Doug Belk, that he wanted to cover Alec Pierce. He wanted the challenge. Belk said, when Jones says he wants someone, I'm betting my check every day of the week on number eight. Yeah, he's a fierce competitor, obviously electric in the return game. He reminds me of a guy I played with, Javier Arenas. He was a third-round pick. Amazing return guy, also great on defense, great in coverage, probably going to be a nickel in the NFL, but he's got a very bright future. Third and goal, nothing against the middle of that Cougars defense. David and Ninny was there to make the tackle, Jerome Ford. And that was a little bit surprising there by Ritter. It looked like they ran a play very similar to what they had earlier in the game, but he would have thrown it right there to Josh Wiley on the on the edge. Instead, he hands it off, and it's dropped for no gain. Great job by Houston's defense. The place kicking is the only thing that's been a concern for this championship-level Cincinnati team. Christian Lowry now with the 23-yard attempt. And what did we say? This is the concern. They've used three different place kickers this season. Cole Smith, who had the game winner in this championship game last year, he was shaky at the start of the year. Three for eight, hasn't played in the past six games. And now Lowry misses the short one, wide left, and the score holds 14-13. Holgerson and company loving that stop. We have six combined drives in this title game between Houston and Cincy. And the last one by Cincy, the missed field goal. That was the first one where we didn't have any points. Now Houston takes over. This is Tank Dell again. He has been the focus of the offense so far, Greg. Yeah, he has. And they're using him in a lot of different ways. And they're finding favorable matchups throughout. They're starting him in the backfield. They're starting him on the left, motioning him back to the right. It's been a really creative plan so far from Dana Holgerson and Shannon Dawson in trying to create favorable matchups and create space for their quickest, most dynamic offensive threat. 
What did Dana say? If you go and line up toe to toe with the Cincy defense, they're going to win. So changing things up. Not a heavy dose of McCaskill, their star running back. Instead, this tune over the middle and in stride gets it complete, and it is green. And he's out just short of midfield. Seth Green, the transfer from Minnesota, goes for 23 yards. And how about running back Henry saving a life there as DeBlanco is breathing some fire on the pressure. Henry with a push from the offensive line as he crosses midfield. Cincinnati 49-yard line. See you what, man? really like what I've seen so far from Clayton Toon. He's been smart. He's gotten the ball out of his hands. He's felt some heat you're going to against this pass rush. There's going to be 10 or 11 plays a game that they just flat out win. But he's hanging in there. He's moving in the pocket. He's been very accurate with his throws as well. Second and seven. Pressure came around the corner. Sanders couldn't get him, so Toon runs away. My Jay Sanders was coming around the corner. Toon was able to peek out to the right and said, let me get away. Another opportunity here probably for Houston in plus territory. Got two downs to get it, so don't be surprised. Alton McCaskill coming back into the game. Don't be surprised if they go with a handoff, maybe something inside. Then line up again quickly, see if they can't go for it on fourth down and short. They're two for five on third down so far. Third and three. Too high for Tank Dell. He's maybe five foot ten. And he's maybe 155 <laughs> pounds, but Maybe I'll put some weight in his pockets. Yeah, absolutely. They did a great job there in coverage. Arquan Bush, really the first time all night. Dell hasn't had a lot of room to work. It's well covered there by the Bearcats. Wilkins, the 27-year-old punter from Australia. Back rotation looking for a pin here. A fair catch at about the 14-yard line. First punt of the game we've had comes with about six and a half minutes to play before halftime. Of the day that could swing everything with the college football playoff. But it's real simple math right here, Kevin and Booger. Winning your in for Desmond Ritter and the Cincinnati group. Logan Hall with the tackle. It was really the first time we've heard from Logan Hall tonight. Big, big, big body. Number 92, six foot six, 280 pounds. The amazing thing is the guy right next to him, Chidozi and Wonko, 5'10". <laughs> great football players come in all shapes and sizes. That's a great example of it there. The defensive tackles for the Houston Cougars defense. Second and eight. Ritter, as he was being hit, got rid of it looking for Alec Pierce. So. It'll be third and eight. Derek Parrish was coming in hard on Desmond Ritter. You know, interesting to see Alabama up on Georgia. Greg, a lot of conversations this week. Alabama wins, obviously. You know they're going to be the number one seed. But if they play that kind of game against Georgia, if they look like they're that good in that class and even lose a highly competitive, dramatic game against Georgia, Alabama with two losses. Especially with Oklahoma State's loss, anything's certainly possible. It would be essentially... Trying to decide between potentially Bama and Notre Dame, and Bama's resume awfully impressive at 11 and 2. Well, oh, if they're playing Georgia that well today, and we all know what Georgia is, what they've been this year. One of the greatest defenses we have seen in the modern era of the sport. False start. Offense number 74. Half distance to the goal. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. College football playoff rankings are brought to you by AT&T 5G. And Greg, if Bama beats Georgia, if Cincinnati wins, I mean, everybody thinks you would have then Bama one, Michigan and Georgia would be splitting up two and three, and Cincinnati would be in at four. Absolutely. They're in great shape. Of course, Cincinnati has to take care of business today. 
against a Houston team that has really settled in here in the second quarter. It's for the most part cut and dry if that result holds in the SEC championship. Houston is playing really good ball here against Cincinnati. Cincinnati's playing well, but it's just a highly competitive title game. Look at this defense swarm. That is Logan Hall, all six foot six of him crashing down on Desmond Ritter. All the way back at the two yard line and Cincy is going to be punting from their own end zone and Houston is going to be in prime position to take the lead before half. What a job there by the Houston defense. Only three guys rushing the passer and one in a quarterback spy. But I told you about Logan Hall just a moment ago. This guy has scouts He's salivating. He's got a ton of talent and obviously made a huge play there. Mason Fletcher, six foot seven freshman punter, has to do something special here. And he keeps it away, and then it takes a fortunate bounce for Cincinnati. He played stay away from Marcus Jones outside the numbers and then made the most of the bounce to go past midfield. Best case scenario for Cincinnati. Well, tomorrow's the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff matchups in the Cotton Bowl and the Orange Bowl to be played on New Year's Eve on ESPN. you got to tune in noon Eastern on ESPN. It'll also be available on the app. Recent guys will reveal the New Year's Six Bowl games, the final top 25, the college football playoff matchups. You and I are going to fly back to the East Coast. We'll be anchoring all night long. 8.30 onward, my friend, right? I think that's right. Well, the rest of the bowl One games. thing at a time, Joe. Let's stay in the moment. We'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> no, they, this defense better worry about the last 4.55 here because good field position after the sack by Houston. Clayton Toon on the quarterback run past midfield to the 47-yard line. Curtis Brooks with the tackle there. I've been pretty impressed so far with everything that Houston's thrown so far at the Cincinnati defense. I mean, they are giving them a ton of different looks. This will be a long, long discussion at halftime with Mike Tressel, the defensive coordinator, Luke Fickle, the head coach, and his defense to try to adjust to some of these looks and some of these unusual plays that Houston has been having some success with. Second five, McCaskill. Just a couple of yards on that play on the right side of the line. And it just goes to show you, everybody is familiar with Dana Holgerson and his long storied history in the air raid system and the success he had at West Virginia. He's one of the best offensive minds in football. And He's certainly showing it with their plan so far here in the first 30 minutes. Third and three, they drop eight against Toon. Third down and three, three-man rush, and he wiggles his way free for a first down, finally taken down by Arquan Bush as he gets five yards on third down and three. Had to do it the tough way. Man, what a job by Clayton Toon. It looked like he was going to get dragged down right there, but he squeaks free, makes one guy miss, turns, goes north and south, knows he has to get four yards for the first down, dives forward. That's three or four different times now that he's extended plays and made off schedule plays to keep drives alive. McCaskill trying to bounce it and he goes the wrong direction. Good pursuit by Darian Beavers who's a finalist for the Buckkiss Award. And that's a young back right there trying to do a little bit too much. You lose at the line of scrimmage. Instead of going backwards with great pursuit, taking a five yard loss, just plow ahead as best you can at 210 pounds. Worst case scenario, you're living to play second and 10, but bad mistake there by the young running back. Second 14, two and a half minutes before halftime.
guy who's likely a first round NFL draft pick coming in hot. They just rock you to sleep. And as you can see, the corner Gardner's eyes are in the backfield the whole time. Toon doesn't see it, doesn't check it. It's totally unblocked and makes a huge negative play. Just a great pressure there and an excellent call by Mike Tressel. Fifth tackle for loss for this Cincinnati defense. Comes at a big moment. Puts Houston in a third and 23 hole. Flags are down. As Henry was the ball carrier. Brooks like, like he jumped there and it's getting chippy. It's a fiery game between these two. 12 and 0 on one side, 11 and 1 on the other. For the snap, Houston never got set. False start on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. With this drive that had great field position. Remember, it was Cincinnati punting from their own end zone, Greg. Yeah, just a great turn there for Cincinnati. A couple consecutive negative plays. Penalty being forced. Replay third down. Yeah, so they thought that it was an illegal motion but it's really a false start so come back out and play third down and super long but just a great response there by Cincinnati's defense after Houston had promising field position. Can't imagine Houston's going to take any unnecessary risks here. Defense has played pretty well. They've settled in here in the second quarter. Would anticipate Houston some, doing something conservative and allow their punter to potentially pin Cincinnati deep in their own end. Saw number one Sauce Gardner made the big play not long ago. And now third and 28. Let's see if they play it conservative. With Tazon Henry in the backfield. And that's exactly what they will do as he just gets back to cross midfield. You think Cincinnati would call a timeout here. 73 seconds left. That's exactly what they'll do. 113 to play before half. Houston will be punting when we come back to this championship game. Thank you, Kevin, back here in Cincinnati. Right before the punt, there's a flag down. Offside, defense, number 30. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. It was fourth and 18. Right here in Cincinnati, place known for its skyline chili, but look at those lines in the sky as the Sun sets in what's been a magnificent afternoon of early December weather and boy they will be partying deep into the night if they can win this one. It is a win and you're in for the college football playoff. Lane Wilkins for Houston punting as Ryan Montgomery puts his heels down at the nine yard line. Wilkins last year didn't allow a positive yardage punt return all season. And now a timeout is called by Houston. We'll be back in 10 seconds. Now a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. Right. 14 to 13, Cincy on top. Everybody was buzzing here when Baylor held on to beat Oklahoma State in the Big 12 because they know the path is clear. What people probably didn't realize is how good this Houston team is. And there's no mistake that we have a highly competitive game here in this championship. So 
as he still has two timeouts to work with. As Wilkins will throw a knuckler down to the 20. And that is where the Bearcats will take over. Desmond Ritter, his longtime girlfriend Claire, she gave birth to their beautiful daughter Leighton last April, Katie. Well, I thought it was interesting. Desmond told me when he goes home, he has to check his competitiveness at the door. He said, I read all this material about newborns and milestones, and he said she's six months, so she technically should be rolling over, but she's not. And I just want her to develop quicker than other babies. He said, I realize it's not all about competitiveness and being first or the best. He says it certainly changed his life, but for the better, guys. Yeah, he says less stressed with football, more mature in every way. 64 seconds to work with. Ford, he shakes free. And he goes for eight and a half yards. Remember, he had that incredible 79-yard touchdown run earlier. And they've adjusted nicely so far to what Cincinnati hit them with early. But here, you have two timeouts if you're Cincinnati. You have a veteran quarterback who's played in a million games. You absolutely trust him to run a two-minute operation, steal some points. Ritter. Off target looking for Trey Tucker. Last Cincinnati drive was at three and out. That was the first of the game for either team. See what they can manage here. Third down and one, 55 seconds before halftime. Right here, obviously, third and one. Got to get the first down. That's the first priority here. But after that, you can expect tempo from the Bearcats. Of course, field goals, not really an option. So they're going to move very quickly the struggles they've had in the kicking game. Third and one and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Deontay Anderson makes the tackle of Montgomery. A great looking play by Deontay Anderson. And now a timeout will be used as Houston will use their second timeout. And this is a great job right here. Just Anderson sees that right guard collapse down. And sure enough. Squeezes right around the edge to drop the ball carry in the backfield. Great trigger. Listen, all week long, folks were talking about the playoff scenarios going into the weekend, and it was assumed oh, Cincinnati's going to take care <laughs> of business against Houston. I mentioned it just a couple minutes ago. This Houston team is good, folks. If you weren't paying attention week one, it was four interceptions that they threw against Texas Tech. Yep. 11 straight wins. Players that have been getting better as the season goes along. This is no mistake that we have this kind of a game. I'm not at all surprised. I mean, you look at the American in general. How good are you at the line of scrimmage? Right. And Houston obviously has great defensive personnel along the line of scrimmage. Offensive line has been holding up really well. How good's your quarterback and how good's your skill? They check all three boxes. So not at all surprised that this game is highly competitive through 30 minutes. Fletcher, the 6'7 freshman punter, on to punt. The dangerous Marcus Jones back to receive. And he calls for the fair catch at the 22-yard line. So the Houston defense did their job, and now the offense takes over with 38 seconds. American Conference College Basketball on ESPN+. Plus. Tomorrow, the Bearcats take on Bryant at 7 Eastern. And Monday, Houston against Alcorn State at 8 Eastern. You can sign up today at ESPN+. Plus dot com slash AAC. Now you got to decide. Clayton Toon's been hot. You have a timeout. So now will Houston potentially try to steal some points here before half? Doesn't look like it based on the formation that they're lined up in right now. Greg, only one time this year has Cincinnati trailed at the half. It was September 18th by four against Indiana. And here it's a one-point margin with Cincinnati on top. That's when Ritter had the touchdown pass to Scott. Cincinnati got the big play from Ford. 197 total yards of offense for Cincinnati on only 18 plays. Houston had the ball for over 22 minutes in that first half, and yet trails by one. Witherspoon with a couple of field goals 
for the Cougars. And it's been a really well played first half with nice adjustments made by both coaching staffs there in the second quarter. It's going to be one heck of a final 30 minutes here in the Queen City. Katie. Thank you, Tess. Coach Fickle, your defense got a big stop just before half. What did you think of the defensive performance of the first two quarters? Well, I think that uh, they're moving the ball way too much on us. They're doing a good job at, uh, you know, shifting and moving around and things and finding some open spots. But, uh, you know, this is going to be a second half game. We knew it was going to be like that. Offensively, you score on your first two drives and then stalled just a bit. What do you need to see from that group moving forward? Well, I think we just got to get momentum. It's hard when they don't get as many opportunities. So this is, uh, we got to play complimentary football the second half. That's what it's going to be all about. Thank you. He's mentioning the shifting and moving and the finding spots. That's Dana Holgerson's offense. We got a good one here with so much on the line. Number four team in the country, 14-13, winning you're in for the college football playoff. The Capital One Halftime Report is still to come after these messages. Back to Dr. Pepper Championship Week. Cincinnati trying to become the first non-Power 5 conference team to make the college football playoff. Second straight year hosting this American Conference Championship. They're up by one here at home. American Conference Championship on ABC presented by Arby's, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week. So Cincy and number one Georgia, the only two undefeated teams in college football. The only two in the nation in the top 10 in both scoring offense and defense. Cincy and Georgia. Cincy's only up one in their championship game. Georgia's trailing at the half in the SEC championship game. You never know what this sport brings about. Joe and Greg with you here as we start this second half. It has been the big play for Cincinnati that has them in position here. What are you looking for in the second half out of the Bearcats? They got to be able to handle the line of scrimmage. So far, you look at those first couple drives. I mean, it was clockwork, in rhythm, throwing the football, running the ball with great consistency. But really, since then, it's been completely different. I mean, this was the first touchdown of the game, just a beautiful throw on the double post. And then the first play of the second drive, Ford out the gate on the counter, but since then, Houston's defense has really settled in, and they have consistently been able to win at the line of scrimmage and haven't allowed many big plays from what is a very explosive Cincinnati offense. Desmond Ritter, 43 wins deep into his great career as he gives to Ford to open up this second half to the 30-yard line. One other thing, too, when you look at Cincinnati's production so far in the first half, just 18 offensive snaps, 0 for 3 on third down, and less than eight minutes of time of possession. So they have got to do a better job of sustaining drives, executing on third down, then cashing in when they get in the red zone. This is only their 20th offensive snap. 20, that's it. Ritter, downfield, wide open! And Pierce having to extend himself to make that dynamic catch. How about Pierce reeling it in? What an adjustment. And does he secure it? Since he's gonna try to go fast, Man, it looks like that arm is underneath it. What an incredible adjustment by their star wide receiver. 44 yards. If Ritter had just floated it, it would be a walk-in touchdown. Instead, it was Pierce who went all out. And in doing so, the medical team is taking a look at him. Based on the smile from the doctor, it makes you think maybe he had a contact come out or something. They're kind of looking at his eye. He landed really hard. Just an unbelievable adjustment there by the leading receiver for the Bearcats, who does such a great job. The bigger the stage, the bigger the moment, the better Pierce has played throughout his career. Second and eight. Ford wrapped up after just gaining a yard that time. Williams with the tackle. 
Third and seven. The kid's been an explosive player. So big, so strong, makes all the contested catches. Mel Piper's got him number 10 among all the wide receivers headed into the NFL next year. Third down and seven. Big third down here for Houston's defense. They're 0 for 3 on third downs tonight in Cincinnati. Going to run the ball and wrapped up at the 20 yard line by Marcus Jones as Jerome Ford. So that's the second time now that Cincinnati's opted to run the ball on third and five plus. Of course, with their field goal kicking issues that are well documented, no surprise to see the offense staying on the field here on fourth down. Fourth down and three. Christian Lowry, who they're using for the short field goals, missed a 23-yarder earlier tonight. Fourth down and three. Ritter. Inside the 10, it's incomplete. Flag is down. He was trying to connect with Thompson. Jones had coverage. Pass interference. Defense. Number eight. Ball be placed. Spot of the foul. First down. De'Anthony Jones is on the field for Houston. Hopefully he's okay. He has five and a half sacks on the year. Training staff is out to see the defensive lineman De'Anthony Jones, and we will take a short break. First and goal, and we return. And a huge first down for Cincinnati because of the Marcus Jones pass interference. Take a look at it there. He arrived just a little bit early. And he never really turned around to play the ball. Let's go to our rules official, John Perry. John, what'd you think of the call? You know, the hand is on the body early, but the intent to impede or the material restriction takes place after the receiver has touched the ball. I like it as nothing based on the timing of the, of the effect. First and goal, Ritter, RPO, and reach it out is Leonard Taylor. Touchdown, Cincinnati. That big six foot five frame of Leonard Taylor scored it for the Bearcats. Taylor's been dynamic. Last week he had one of the plays of the game was stiff arming his way into the end zone on a 44 yard touchdown. Christian Rowley adds the extra point. Key play there was the pass interference on fourth down that our rules expert John Perry made a point on. But Marcus Jones got called for PI and it gave the opportunity for Desmond Ritter to connect with one of his big tight ends, Leonard Taylor, for the touchdown. And that's just a great job there by Mike Denbrock, the offensive coordinator, putting together a really nice plan and a reaction to something that we saw a little earlier. All right, here you look at the play. When you see this End man on the line of scrimmage, right there. There's nobody in the flat. So when you see that wide open space, you adjust to it. There's nobody there. Float it right over the top of the defender. And it's a thing of beauty. You see on third down how they played the tight end into the flat. There was nothing but green grass. They handed it off. They make the adjustment a little bit later. Throw the touchdown. It's perfectly executed. Just a great response to what Houston did defensively. Anthony Jones going off on a card defensive lineman for Houston. That's great stuff with the offensive coordinator, Den Brock, and Ritter, who he trusts like having another coach on the field. Marcus Jones with the return, and Jones is wrapped up at the 28-yard line. Jones. 
Well, guys, I talked to Dana Holgerson coming out of the locker room, and he thought his offense did a nice job moving the ball in the first half, but he said the name of the game is finishing drives, and we didn't do that enough in the first half. He'd like to see that change. He did say we weathered the storm early on. We knew since he was really good right out of the gate, we weathered the storm and settled in. They'll need to do that here again here in the second half. But I asked him if he liked the time of possession disparity. He said, well, we're just huddling, and they score the ball really fast, so he wasn't willing to hang his hat on it. Yeah, time of possession, one thing, Katie, the scoreboard, another thing. And right now, it's a trail-by-eight situation, and there's an interception right into the hands of DeBlanco. Joel DeBlanco, dead center, playing middle linebacker, and just snags it. And Uncle Mo has arrived at Nipper. Momentum Cincinnati. What a job by the linebacker reading the eyes of the quarterback. Look at the block of the entire time. He floats with the back and then he retraces right back underneath the over route. He's just reading the eyes the whole time. That's just fantastic veteran presence from the senior DeBlanco who's played a million games, has made a million plays. Few bigger than that right there on the first play of the second half for the Cougs. Ford wrapped up around the ankle by Anderson. You think about you know a tight game at the half, knowing how much is on the line and how championship level teams react when you come out for the second half of games like this. Yeah, it's just when you make the adjustments and give credit to Houston, amazing plan in the first half to create opportunities for their playmakers, most notably Nathaniel Bell. But right there, you see the eyes of the Blanco that basically just fell right underneath where the pass was going. It's just a great read by the linebacker. Ritter with time. Ritter to the end zone, and they score again. And it's Alec Pierce. Just a great job working the back shoulder. You have the long six foot three Alec Pierce working against the undersized Marcus Jones at five foot eight. The long wide receiver is going to reel it in most of the time. Just a great throw and catch by Cincinnati. Marcus Jones, who's fiery, who leads the nation in interceptions with five. But in less than four minutes, Cincinnati has come out and shown their stuff. Playing for history, Desmond Ritter, the touchdown to Pierce, and all of a sudden it's a 15-point lead. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Every minute that I have left, I will thank God for the day, for the moment I have. V-Week at ESPN and our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities in cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of the donations go directly to cancer research. Critical drive here for the Houston Cougars. This place, if they get a three and out, might erupt. I think right now they need a Marcus Jones return that sparks something. Instead, they squib it short so that Jones doesn't touch the ball. That's probably the smart thing to do. Jones is the most dynamic return man in the game. Katie. Well, guys, every player is motivated differently. Some need to be stroked while others need to be challenged. Alec Pierce is the latter. He's at his best when it's personal. So his offensive coordinator has been in his ear all week, stoking the fire, poking the bear, telling Pierce that number eight Marcus Jones is going to lock him up, that he won't be able to get open today. He can't win the 50-50 balls. Well, clearly it works. It lights a fire and spurs his desire to prove he can play with anyone, which is evident with those two catches. Pierce has become a dynamic force, comes from a great sports family. 
Parents both played at Northwestern. Mom Stephanie was a volleyballer. Dad Greg played football. Henry going to test the right side, and he is just driven straight back. As you see right there, MyJ Sanders. Maybe a little late shove, kind of like that. Send a message, but one of the first times Houston's really been off schedule. They did a really good job on first and ten throughout the course of the first half. Sauce Gardner was showing pressure off the edge, then he backs off into coverage. But coming down is tune as Jawan Briggs comes up with the sack. And that is their fourth of the game. And that's just a killer for Houston. You only have three rushers, and you beat a five-man protection. It's really a six-man protection with the tight end in there as well, a seven-man if you include the running back. Three rushers against seven guys that are possibly protecting, and you still get a sack? That's just a great job on the edge by Briggs. Crowd noise is just so much right now. There was movement because of it. So tough to communicate. False start. Coach, you come to this old historic campus and you will say, how did they shoehorn the stadium into this spot? Well, it's one of the oldest in all of college football, third oldest, open in 1915, so they pack it in. But 40,000 can sound like 80,000 in this pit environment. Listen to this on third and 22. By Jay Sanders with the tackle of Henry. It's the thing of beauty, the sequence there by the Cincinnati defense. I mean, seven man protection, you have a three man rush on second down. You drop the quarterback for a huge loss. I mean, that's just. In Houston, you got to be kicking yourself, but my goodness, what an impressive sequence there from the Bearcats. And Wilkins turns this ball over. Fair catch inside the 40-yard line by Montgomery. What a swing we have had in this third quarter. It was 14-13 at the half, and then all this. They could pour it on. They could pour it on quickly. Cincinnati really starting to feel it offensively and defensively. The Blanco on the interception and quickly taking advantage on the one-on-one -on -one with your number one wide receiver. And Cincinnati is one of those teams that they rev their engine. They can go with anybody. And right now, we're seeing them in full gear here in the first few minutes of the second half. Desmond Ritter only has eight completions. Three of them are touchdown passes. Stiff arm to try to just get away before he is taken down a couple yards beyond the line of scrimmage as he was chased by Owens. And that's one part of this Cincinnati offense that we haven't really seen a whole lot of today is quarterback run game. Desmond Ritter, just four carries in the first half. Five now, only eight yards to show for it. So he has not really been a factor with his legs. But you can imagine here in the second half, start to get to it a little bit more. Safety pressure, and he gets it out quickly to Wiley. And Wiley with nobody around him, past midfield to the 42-yard line. Josh Wiley. Just a bust here defensively by Houston. They bring overload pressure to the right, and there's nobody that's dropping out in the flat to the left. Wiley's there. The easiest completion that Desmond Ritter's had all night. It's really a completely uncovered tight end in the flat. Expect a shot here potentially from Cincinnati. Let's see if they throw it over their head. Ford keeps it on the ground, bounces it to the outside. He's going to do it again. And what do we have here in the third quarter? We got a snowball heading to the playoffs the way Cincinnati wants it. They are rolling downhill in this third quarter. 42 yards, Jerome Ford had a 
79 yarder earlier. Forty-two yard touchdown. Jerome Ford. Oh, the college football playoff. That exclusive club. The select few. The blue bloods. Guess what Cincinnati wants to do to that front door today? Ford wants to smash it right in. 35 to 13. Down to the College Football Playoff National Championship, Monday, January 10th, on ESPN. Halfway through the third quarter, and Cincinnati has taken a major leap forward to the history that they want to make in this sport today. Ford just had a 42-yard touchdown. It's 35 to 13. Cincinnati has scored 21 unanswered points in four minutes and 57 seconds. By the way, five explosive plays of over 20 yards, three of them for touchdowns. All-state playoff predictor. And all you got to do is look at that scoreboard and understand what happened earlier today with Oklahoma State. Do not pay attention to the 79% if you believe Cincinnati's going to get the job done right here because it's a win you're in situation. And Greg, right now Alabama is up on Georgia. Alabama beats Georgia. Baylor already beat Oklahoma State. ESPN.com slash Allstate playoff predictor for more. Could be sitting at a Bama versus Cincy in the playoff on Michigan if they win tonight against Georgia. That would be the ultimate underdog who's so capable against the bluest of blue bloods if Bama holds on and this score holds. Clayton Toon, as he's able to get to the edge and long stride it for nine yards. We talked already about Cincinnati and how the better the opponent, the better they seem to play. I think when you look at some of the performances, the two lanes, the Tulsa's, some of those teams in the midseason swoon, the opponents were trying to junk things up, doing a bunch of different things, making it very difficult for Cincinnati. They deserve a ton of credit. I think Cincinnati against a team like Houston or SMU or Notre Dame, they actually match up better against better teams than they do against teams that try to do a bunch of unique, unorthodox things. Two. Wants to launch it deep. He wants Singleton double covered and had no chance at all as Kobe Bryant and Brian Cook were converging. Kobe Bryant, one of the best defensive backs in all of college football. He's one of the three finalists for the Jim Thorpe Award. Yeah, that's a difficult award to give out because you could make a pretty strong argument for Kobe Bryant. You can make a pretty strong argument for Sauce Gardner on the other side as well. It's well covered there on the deep post. Good try there by Toon. Very well covered there by the Bearcats secondary. Houston drives tonight. First three drives, 13 points. Last five drives, three punts, an interception, no points. McCaskill, he's ridden down by MyJ Sanders, who could have left early for last year's NFL draft. Guy who sees a lot of double teams, but does affect many plays. A lot of quarterback hurries this year. Yeah, he does a great job off the edge. Has great length, six foot five, 250 pounds, but has that first step. It's really difficult for tackles to handle. First charge, time out of the half. Cincinnati. Third down and nine, and a timeout is used. Monday Night Football will be the Patriots against Josh Allen and the Bills. 8 Eastern on ESPN. Of course, everything begins with Monday Night Countdown getting started at 6 p.m. When you think through, you mentioned it earlier. All the original college football Cinderella's who never made it 
to that next step. You go back to Sean King when he was playing quarterback at Tulane in the late 90s and those great Utah teams when they were part of the Mountain West and Boise's great run. But here it is. Here's the day that all those teams of the past, all the little guys have been waiting for. Yeah, and I think everybody, like even if you ask Houston players, they say, we want to beat them, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be cool to see potentially a team from the American have a crack at a national championship. Let's see what Houston can come up with here on third and nine and mishandling it. Ball is out. And Houston's Dennis Bardwell has to dive back just to recover it. So it is going south for Houston as Cincinnati's had all the momentum. And the snap just way off the mark there. You could see he almost snaps it right to Alton McCaskill, the running back. It's a good job there by Bardwell rallying to recover the fumble. But Houston now several errors here in the second half. Errors they didn't make in the first half that made them very competitive. They just can't make mistakes against a team that's this good. Montgomery has a fair catch at the 34-yard line. This season, along with their contributions to the university's general scholarship funds for every field goal and extra point made, all state will also be donating to the American Red Cross to help with disaster relief efforts, and we thank all state for that. Ritter hit Taylor, then he hit Pierce, and then Ford went for 42 yards. Ford's been all about the big plays. He has 11 carries, 153 yards. He's averaging nearly 14 yards a carry today. You've got to think he's going to get plenty of work as Ford rips off 12 more yards. He's been dynamic. And this is where Cincinnati just becomes so dangerous. They can run the ball extremely well between the tackles. Their quarterbacks, obviously, a very effective contributor to the run game. They have matchup problems on the outside with the speed of Tyler Scott and the sure handedness of Alec Pierce, Trey Tucker in the slot. Two great tight ends. So many different ways to beat you. Good job by Jared Parrish. Not to mention what makes Cincinnati a real championship contender is their play in the trenches. I mean, their offensive line is enormous across the board. And in games like this, granted, Houston's defense has not been on the field very much, just 12 minutes in the ball game and only 31 snaps. But this big offensive line wears you down in the second half as they continue to lean on you. They go with the end around Trey Tucker. Ball is out. And the whistle blows as they're going to say that it was out of bounds as Tucker lost that ball at the end of that play. It's a good effort there. Defensively by number 24, Malik Robinson, whose right foot was on the sideline as he touched the football, which immediately blows the ball dead. That's out of bounds, essentially. Right there, you see foot out of bounds, touching the football. It's a good effort, but obviously just not in bounds. Had he been, Cincinnati recovered it and had some room to run. Third down and five, swinging it out of the backfield, and Montgomery able to make one quick move. I'll see with a Markham, looking at Markham, maybe less than a yard short of that line to gain at the 45 yard line as Deontay Anderson was there defensively. Yeah, they might take a look at this because he was on top of the defender. It looked like as he was tackled, I think this ball's about a yard and a half off on the spot because I don't think Montgomery was ever down upon initial contact. Fourth down and one. And Ford is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. That was Derek Parrish with the tackle. And good job by the defense on fourth down. And that was a great job by Houston's defense, but potentially a missed opportunity here from Cincinnati because it 
Looks like as he's tackled to the ground, look, Montgomery right here makes a move. As he's going down to the ground, is he down? Looks like they spotted it at the 45 yard line, but where is the nose of the football? Looks like it's beyond that mark. So if anything, your fourth down play, you wouldn't have had as far to go, but either way, excellent job by Houston's defense getting off the field and what was a gotta have it situation? Absolutely it was. Had to have the defensive stop. They get it, Clayton Toon in the offense back on the field. But it has been a struggle for Toon and Holderson and that side of the ball in this third quarter. They need a spark and they need it now. Three man rush. Toon is somehow escapes to Blanco. And then slides down for a gain of eight and a half. DeBlanco was just spying him, Greg. And somehow he got around him. Yeah, one of the few times DeBlanco's been on the losing end of a play today. Just a great effort from Toon. DeBlanco's all over it. I mean, he's got eyes in the backfield, has a good feel for it, closes quickly, just can't bring him down. And that's a testament to the strength of the quarterback, staying upright and picking up a positive play. Second and three. Tune. This time he can't escape Joel DeBlanco. This is a great job by DeBlanco because you're going to see pressure off the right hand side, and DeBlanco is going to go late as they layer the pressure. You see the tackle and the running back take him, and there's absolutely nobody there for DeBlanco who green dogs and drops the quarterback yet again. He said, you made me miss last time. You're not going to get me again. The senior makes the play. Third down and five. Tune driven back by Curtis Brooks for the sack. Just great pressure right up the middle, unblocked and impossible for Clayton Toon because all of his wide receivers are on the right side of the field. He has to move to his left. There's nobody home. He wisely takes the sack. Just a great pressure call there by the defensive coordinator, Mike Tressel. Montgomery, the fair catch of the Wilkins punt at the 25-yard line. Crunch time brought to you by Cheez-It. Six sacks today, Greg. Yeah, and they have just been relentless. And there have been several sacks, too, that could have been and Toon just made a spectacular play by making the guy miss or getting the ball out just in the nick of time. You can see the interception there by DeBlanco as well. This front for Cincinnati when it's an obvious pass situation and they can pin their ears back, they are a significant problem for whoever it is they're playing. And so far today, these Houston tackles, both Patrick Paul and Dennis Bardwell, they've had their hands full throughout most of this game. Over a minute to go in this third quarter. And as Ford is going to put up incredible numbers today with the work hole, most likely get down the stretch of this game. He goes for six more. He has 173 yards rushing. Unlike two carries, it feels like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, this guy, he's something else, man. I remember watching him last year. As you can see, every time he touches it, first and ten for the Bearcats, it feels like. But... I remember watching this guy last year, like, golly, he runs so north and south, but he's got that breakaway speed. He reminds me a lot of Nick Chubb. Not as big, not as physical, but he's so much faster than you realize when he gets in the open field. Kept his balance there and adds to a massive night on second and four. Yeah, you tap the helmet, buddy. You deserve, you deserve a rest. 191 yards? Uh, 191. I think he can handle a few more. Still 15 more minutes to play. I'd be willing to bet you a dollar. He goes over 200 on the night, but he has been outstanding, making guys miss. 
and creating in the open field. One point game at the half, and now a full stranglehold on it. History awaits if they keep up like this. Third quarter starting to define things to have magic in Cincinnati and a playoff. The American Conference Championship game presented by Arby's returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. The most significant game ever played in this conference's history. Mike Oresco is going to be handing out that trophy. And if this holds, he'll be handing it out to a team that will be headed to the college football playoff. And as we start this fourth quarter, and Cincinnati does so with a 35-13 lead. And just a quick dump to Wiley, who doesn't gain anything, as Owens made a nice play at the line of scrimmage. So far there in that third quarter, obviously all Bearcats been capitalizing on mistakes, being able to run the football with great efficiency, and also timely passes from Desmond Ritter, who's been very dialed in as the game's gone along. Hasn't had a ton of opportunities to throw the ball, push it down the field, but has been very accurate. 11 to 15 now for nearly 200 yards and three touchdowns. Nothing there for Montgomery, just lowers his shoulders for a yard. In that third quarter, Houston had one snap in Cincinnati territory. One. And it was because Cincinnati got stopped on their, really on their own 45-yard line. So it's really all Bearcats throughout the course of that third quarter. It's going to be a tough hill to climb here for Houston, but it certainly starts with the third down stop right here. Third down has been the struggle tonight for Cincinnati. On a night when so many other things have come so easy, they're 0 for 6 on third down conversions tonight. Yeah, definitely something to clean up there. There was another opportunity there for Ritter on a little screen. I mean, goodness. If he could have gotten just a slightly more accurate pass to Ford, had Ford gotten out just a little bit more cleanly to the right-hand side, he might have scored another one because there was nobody home after Houston opted to bring pressure. Fletcher on to punt. His third tonight. Houston will take over at the 10-yard line. Week 13, NFL Sunday, spend it with the countdown crew. Before the Ravens and Steelers renew their rivalry, Lamar Jackson goes one-on-one -on -one with Steve Young. Randy Moss will sit down with the Bucks receivers, Evans and Godwin. 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the app this week with the countdown crew. This is going to be increasingly difficult. It's not really hard. They're not really easy anywhere in the stadium for the away team. Nip at night experience is real. Backed up with the student section over Clayton Toon's right shoulder will be no picnic this part of the field. McCaskill, who has been such a big part of their success this year, has been struggling tonight. He just has 32 yards on the night. The Cincinnati defense, Greg, in the third quarter, they were on the field for 11 plays. Minus six yards of offense for Houston. Since his defense had an interception and three sacks in that quarter. Yeah, just completely dominant. It really starts up front. The Blanco has been outstanding at the second level, but the defensive line with the Bearcats has really set the tone in winning one-on-one -on -one matchups throughout the course of the last 15 minutes of game time. Second and eight. Toon from inside his own five-yard line. Ball came loose there as it is picked up and returned. Let's see the ruling on the field is indeed a touchdown for Beavers. Brian Cook made the big hit of Herslow, and Beavers scoops and scores. They will clearly look at this on replay. 
for a touchdown. Previous play is under further review. And a great operation by the American referees because had they blown it dead as an incompletion, then you wouldn't have the opportunity to obviously advance the football. So let him advance the football, let him clearly recover, let him score the touchdown, and then come clean it up after the fact on the replay review. Right there, did Herslow secure the catch for long enough before the ball was jarred free? This would be a good look at it. Catch, boom, bang, bang. I, I don't know, we have a rules expert with us. I don't think there's enough to overturn that call. Looked pretty bang bang. And since it was called a touchdown, I almost think the play is going to have to stand. What do you got, John Perry? I got control one foot and with the second foot, a big hit, which takes the ball loose. Remember, the ruling in the field is a fumble six points. It needs to be clear and obvious to make a change. I would stick with the ruling. I'm with you. It has to be indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt to overturn the call on the field and I just don't know if I have it I and mean, Herslow has it takes a step but man it's it's very very close and catch no catch is a very subjective ruling after further review the pass was incomplete oh third wow. down Houston they take it the off the board the 12 yard line third down now, John, what do you think is the argument for doing that? I'm not sure. You know, they're not in there very long. They're doing the administrative stuff. I just don't see it as indisputable to take the catch, fumble, score away. Yeah, he never really secures it. I mean, catch, no catch is, is very subjective, very controversial, both in the NFL and in college. So it's put 100 officials in the room. 50 might see it as a catch, fumble. 50 might see it as an incompletion. But... Clearly they're not on the same page with us, John. I'm with you. I thought it was a fumble pick, uh, fumble return to the house. Third down and eight. Toon steps up away from the pressure, but then is taken down by Huber. Wilson Huber able to get to Toon. Wilson, don't call me Kevin Huber, who, of course, the great Bearcat punter, now like Bangle. It. Flag is down at the 35. It's a late flag there. That was a very late flag. I don't know what it was. Maybe a sideline or something along the lines of that? After the play was over, on sports by conduct, number nine of the defense, 15 yards from previous spot, automatic first down. That's number nine's first on sports by of the game. That's on Bush, Arquan Bush. And he's played a whale of a football game. He's had a tough matchup, too, against Tank Dell. And you can see the jawing long after the play. I mean, obviously, you got to keep your poise in a situation like that. Never want to allow team to have life because of a mistake you made. He's played a whale of a football game. Just got to calm him down. Big mistake there by the outstanding nickel. So after the penalty, first down for Houston. Design quarterback run with Toon. They've done much more of that today than many would expect. We told you about Toon with the hamstring injury this year. Yeah, and they've actually done a much better job Cincinnati has earlier in the game Toon did break free a couple times on scrambles that was a course quarterback designed run but Cincinnati's rallied back to Toon and converged as he broke forward towards the line of scrimmage throughout the course of the second half it's been a good adjustment by Mike Tressel second and seven Henry there was nothing there everything got clogged up Ty Van Fossen with that run fit that was a great job there by Jabari Taylor. Just completely clogging the hole. Running through there like a bull in a china shop and just throwing Houston offensive linemen around as he's dropped for minimal game. Nine TFLs now. Ride this wave of sound for this defense right to the end. 
Third down and eight. Tune underneath and trying to fight for extra yardage for that line to gain. Jake Herzlow. He's been targeted plenty today. Just a little bit short, but you got to think. I mean, Dana, at this point, three score game. Got to go for it. Keep your offense on the field. I think quarterback power would be my play here. Quarterback's been your most powerful runner in the game today. So I would just run Clayton Tune to the left hand side and see if I can't get that yard. Fourth down and one. It's what they do, and he gets plenty of it. And a little Clayton something Jim. extra out to the 43 yard First line for Dana Holderson. Yeah, good design there. You fake the jet sweep, you get a little bit of flow from Cincinnati's defense. And Toon hits it north and south with a full head of steam. Good execution, critical conversion there for the Cougs. Didn't have anything downfield. So eventually he goes down for the seventh time tonight. And Curtis Brooks has been so active. And it's just so difficult. You have a three-man rush, which means there's eight guys dropping back in coverage with the Blanco, who's there at the second level spying the quarterback. He's the one that has converged several times tonight. But when you have that many guys dropping back in coverage, and a quarterback spy on, so tough for that offensive line to hold up long enough for Clayton to find someone uncovered downfield. Good work by Malik Van on that last play. Second and 14, and that goes into the ground in front of Tank Dell. Pitt and Wake Forest still to come your way in the ACC championship. Told you two tremendous quarterbacks going head to head. Hartman against Pickett. And there are a lot of people who believe Kenny Pickett is in that Heisman conversation. It's third and 14. Third down and 14. Dell. Spins free and then cuts back to the inside. How about this out of Tank Dell? All the way down to the 10 yard line. He's got a little wiggle to him. 51 yards from Tank Dell. Man, how about this? I mean, Tank Dell, this is all him. I mean, making guys miss, spinning for him. How many broken tackles? Did he just create an excellent job, too, by Tejon Henry, who is out there, number four, trying to spring the block for the touchdown. As you can see, Tank Dell is exhausted, rightfully, after what was an incredible individual effort. First and goal after that sensational play from Dell. Taylor makes the tackle and the flag is down. Flag is down at the 20. Another late flag. It looked like someone got After thrown down over. late. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 18 in defense. Half this is the goal. Automatic first down. That's Shawan Briggs, defensive end for Cincy. Yeah, and it's a good call, too. You're going to see Briggs just slam down. The offensive line right there on the right side. You see at the top right of your screen. It's completely unnecessary after the whistle. I mean, that's twice now that Cincinnati's made really boneheaded plays. That has given this Houston offense a little bit of life. McCaskill, can he find something down here at the goal line? He works it to the two. Seven and a half minutes to go. Until Cincinnati does what no team 
has been able to do, to be the non-Power 5 conference team that makes the college football playoff. Luke Fickle has talked all week about, I don't even pay attention. People ask me about, well, what about if Alabama? What about if Oklahoma State? He said, I just know we're playing Houston. Tune. Can he get around it? Flag is down as he goes in for a touchdown at the moment, but we will see if they walk this back. Holding. Offense. Number 73. 10 yard penalty. Still second down. They could have gotten 73. They could have gotten 65. <laughs> there were some red jerseys that were being tugged all over the place there. As you can see on the pole, 73, working right here. You see that shoulder from My J. Sanders get tugged. They also had one on the center, too. So it could have gone either way, but a good call, I think, by the official. So they're back to the 12-yard line on second and goal. Toon, design quarterback draw. Oh, and he just gets leveled by Beavers. Eh, Beavers is saying, well, what happened to that touchdown I thought I had a few minutes ago? This is a huge hit here on the contact. And that's a good, clean hit by Beavers. Looked like the Houston sideline wanted a targeting. Yeah, they're asking for target. You can see the GA, and there's Holgerson as well. But he's not a defenseless player at that point. He didn't launch. He didn't initiate contact with the crown of the helmet. It's a good no call for target, but I don't blame the Houston sideline for trying. Third and goal, tune. Underneath and into Herslow. And that caps a long drive. They go 14 plays, 90 yards, and it's the seven yard touchdown to Jake Herslow. And a great job there by the offensive line holding up long enough. Herslow had to go all the way across the field on the shallow cross. The offensive line gave Toon plenty of time to find the open receiver, but if you're Cincinnati, you got to be kicking yourself. You gave two free first downs on that drive that gave Houston essentially seven points. Clayton Toon and Houston fighting till the end. 35-20 as history awaits for Cincinnati. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. We have the means. And Cincinnati defense was smothering in the third quarter. And then moments ago, Houston trying their best to just make that scoreboard a little more manageable. 13 play, 90 yard drive. And now let's see if they go with the onside with Bubba Baxa. 6.06 to play. 35 to 20 and they do kick away hands team was up for Cincinnati and this will draw the flag as the ball went out of bounds free kick out of bounds kicking team ball be placed the 35 yard line first down talked about this day being the day where everybody wanted to finally Find out if college football changes for the little guy. We're just six minutes away from that happening. Don't go anywhere. Thirty-five to twenty, six oh six to play. Today's Aflac trivia question. Cincinnati, you know what's on the line here, trying to become the first group of five team to make the college football playoff. Who's the last non-Power 5 team to win a national championship? That is the Aflac trivia question. Are we counting UCF's claim to a national title in That's 2017? up to you, my friend. That is up to you if you want to go down okay. that path. Well, I'm not going to. Okay. I, I don't acknowledge that one. But That Peach Bowl win over Auburn isn't pushing it over the line for you? Not, not for me. So I'm trying to think. That was a great team. Non-Power 5. 2017.
Third pitch to Jerome Ford. And he's going to lose yardage on what has been a night where he very rarely did. Took the pitch from Ritter. We're a long way away from the days where Desmond Ritter went from relying completely on his legs and competitive spirit to win football games. When he was younger, Luke Fickle said he just pressed and pressed, tried to be too perfect. Until last season when Fickle said, hey man, you have the best feel for what's going on out there. Just let it fly. Be aggressive and trust what you see. Fickle says that's where he's grown the most and he's been the catalyst for what has been an incredible run this season, guys. Yeah, Katie, what did he say? You, you try to be so perfect that you actually make things more difficult on yourself. Just go out there, be the leader you are, the talent you are. Throw passes like this downfield just outside of Tyler Scott's reach. Remember, Scott had the 25 yard touchdown for their first score of the day. Yeah, I think he's done such a great job, too, of just getting better and incrementally better each and every year. So many people expect quarterbacks to be a finished product the day they show up. I mean, not everybody's Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> day one is a complete game changer. They won with defense and run game, and he has slowly but surely, over the course of a four-year period, just gotten better and better and better, and has grown as a person, as a leader, in Luke Fickle's system. It's been so fun to watch his development, and he's got a very bright future. Whistles both pre-snap. As the timeout's First called. First timeout of the half. Cincinnati. Um, Houston. Houston. Excuse me. Houston. Take a short break and be right back. It's going to be a heck of a celebration here, isn't there? As we asked Cincinnati, looking to become the first group of five team to make the playoff. Who's the last non-Power Five team to win a national champion? Wow, BYU, 1984. Yeah. I would not have guessed BYU. I wasn't even thinking that. They beat Michigan in the Holiday Bowl. <laughs> so that I thought year. it was somewhere totally different. I don't even know what I was thinking. Trevor Maddich, our colleague, was the starting center on that team with Robbie Bosco at quarterback back then. Here's Damon Ritter on third and 14. Desmond Ritter goes ahead. And taken down by Williams. Desmond Ritter for a rush of 10 yards. They beat Michigan back then in 84. Michigan, of course, in a big one tonight. Bama is trouncing Georgia. Since he's hoping to hold on here, you got to think if Michigan wins tonight, you're going to have a Michigan-Georgia most likely matchup and a Bama-Cincinnati playoff matchup. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, that's, like you said, the bluest of the blue blood in Alabama against... Isn't it perfect, really? A, a a Cincinnati team that's just been begging for an opportunity. I mean, here, here it is. <laughs> it's, it's, you're about to have it, potentially. Let's check in with Kevin in the studio. Thank you very much. Offense, number seven. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. Great football still to come tonight on ABC. Pitt and Wake Forest. You say watch out for all the points there. Yeah. Jordan Addison, a great wide receiver for Pitt. They're going to be slinging it around tonight, aren't yeah. they? Two great quarterbacks, two very fun offenses to watch, and two defenses that have question marks. So I'm <laughs> very much looking forward to seeing our colleagues on the call for what should be a very entertaining ballgame. Marcus Jones had a load of traffic from a teammate there. See what kind of fight Houston still has left with 5.07 to play, trailing by 15 in this American Championship game. Subway ACC Championship game is coming up 8 Eastern right here on ABC. Number 15 Pitt, number 16 Wake Forest. They meet up just the second time they've ever played in their history, and they're going to play for a conference championship. We have the American Conference Championship being decided with an outstanding effort in the second half by Cincinnati against this very talented Houston team that has won 11 straight games coming in. Clayton Toon pressure off the edge from Sauce Gardner. They pick it up. Toon runs away from it. 
and then is able to get the ball over to Tank Dell. Dell is just dynamic in the open field, Greg. Man, he's unbelievable. I mean, he just refuses to go down. He's a little banged up as he's going to go to the sideline, but man, he is so quick in the open field and it's been really difficult to bring down on so many different occasions. He's certainly been their spark tonight. Sparked the last drive and now getting this one off to a nice start as well. 24 yards there. Haskell works his way to the 45 yard line. You know, it's interesting, both these teams, Greg, we've talked about it, of course, the news this past September. They're headed to the Big 12 eventually. They'll join no later than July of 24. And then the Americans going to take on UAB, FAU, Charlotte, North Texas, Rice, and a pretty good UTSA program. Excellent UTSA program. Won the conference championship last night against Western Kentucky. The Americans going to be in great shape, but I'm telling you, man, Cincinnati and Houston, these two programs are poised to be among the two best in the Big 12 right now. Second and seven for Clayton Toon. Lots of time, but good coverage downfield. And then he tries to go to Sawyer. And is caught on the sideline there. To that point, you know, you talk to Mike Oresco, the commissioner of the American. And the conference's attitude is celebrate Cincy and Houston while they're here and what they've accomplished, because they wouldn't have accomplished this without the success of this conference. Absolutely. And Cincinnati, UCF, Houston, their success made the American a very desirable place in a time in which realignment was going absolutely haywire. Obviously, UAB and UTSA, they had some options, and the American was a no-brainer destination for all those programs that were given the opportunity. You know, it's interesting because Luke Fickle has had to answer the question, all right, how good do you think your team yeah. is? Now, Luke Fickle's been to the top, obviously. He coached at Ohio State, played there, knows what it's like to be on national title-level teams at Ohio State. He answers the question, listen, we're good enough. We're of this caliber. You broke down the roster to yeah. our crew this week. You say, look at the talent at every level across the board here. It's amazing, and I honestly believe this. Now, people will think I'm crazy. I think they match up better, for instance, against a team like Michigan than they do against East Carolina How in some so? ways. Because East Carolina, Navy, they're undersized in some areas yeah. and can use movement. And, and things that are really difficult to actually block. So you saw last week East Carolina was giving them all sorts of fits. Well, guess who doesn't do that? Michigan and Georgia. They play, and they're more predictable with how they try to defend you. So I actually think with their size, they match up better against some Big Ten teams, which is why you've seen against the best players and the best teams that they've faced, they've actually had their best performances. They're reviewing this as catch, no catch on the sideline. This play by Sawyer. Well, it's a fascinating conversation to have in terms of how they match up with those kind of teams. After further review, the ruling of the field stands. First down, Houston. Especially considering that if everything holds here with what's happening in the American, what's happening in the SEC. You can very well see a number one Bama against a number four Cincy. Of course, yeah, Michigan and Iowa still to come tonight. Michigan and Georgia would be splitting up two and three. That's just a matter of jersey color if Michigan wins the Big Ten. Three and a half minutes to play. Was a 10 yard reception by Sawyer. There just hasn't been much room for Alton McCaskill who's been a record-setting freshman running back who's going to have an incredible career at Houston. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I love watching this young man play. I think he's got a very bright future. But it's been tough sledding tonight against a defensive front that has respected the run all night long and has been really strong at the point of attack. Second and nine. Toon again dealing with the coverage downfield, again dealing with Darian Beavers tracking him. Buckus Award finalist, guy who was a safety in high school, then started his career at UConn, transferred here to Cincy, and all of a sudden he's broken out with one of the better linebackers in the country. 
Yeah, he's excellent. He does a great job tracking the football. And with them playing three down defensive linemen, they put an awful lot on their inside linebackers. And Beavers and DeBlanco have been excellent. Third down and six. Toon got hit as he throws, and it's incomplete beyond Herzlow. Fourth down coming up. Is this the play right here that ignites the celebration and a route to a potential playoff berth? One stop, and their ticket is essentially punched. Fourth down and six, tune, and isn't that fitting? Eight times tonight, he has been sacked. Twelfth tackle for loss. Cincinnati's defense putting a stamp on it. And look at this scene at Nipper. They've been playing ball here since 1915. But they have never seen anything like this. They belong. Championship belts in the student section. Cincinnati. Cincinnati is going to have the chance to play for a national championship. Cincinnati is going to find themselves in the college football playoff. And for Luke Fickle, for Ohio's own, the guy who could have left, who grew up in Columbus, was an outstanding wrestler and nose tackle who played at Ohio State, who coached at Ohio State. Saw his career start off at Akron. Was part of nine Big Ten conference titles, two national championships with the Buckeyes. Was asked to step up at one point with program upheaval there. And now five years at Cincinnati on a week when the college football carousel was spinning round and round at hyper warp speed in loop they trust. A perfect 12 0 for the second time in program history, under two minutes away. From 13 and 0, and the rarest for many years unthinkable accomplishment of a non Power 5 program being invited to the party. Sunday at noon will be the official reveal. But, Greg, with what happened today in the Big 12 championship, they took the field knowing it was a win and you're in. How about the way they came out for this third quarter, this second half? Just absolutely no doubt. I mean, that's what you love. And that's what we've been waiting for from Cincinnati. At times in the middle of the year, constantly fluctuating their level of play to the level of the competition. But when this team wants to go, and when they press the accelerator, they can go with anybody. I don't care group of five. I don't care power five. Just watch them. And if you do, I promise you, you will be blown away with the quality of play at all three levels defensively, along the line of scrimmage offensively, by the quarterback play, and by the weapons they have in their offensive arsenal. This team is for real, and they are deserving of the opportunity that's going to be right in front of them just about 73 seconds from now. And how about Jerome Ford and his explosive runs today? It started with the 79-yarder. You would have to think he would be the conference championship player of the game. 
He's been outstanding. Just electric, huge plays in the run game that he's contributed all afternoon long. The committee always talks about strength of schedule. Since he's not as strong as some of the Power Five conferences, but they came into the year knowing at Notre Dame is sitting there. And they went out and controlled that game and got that signature win against a top 10 team. Indiana was the hot trendy team last year in the Big Ten. They had them on the schedule, took care of business. And then the showdown with SMU where they shut down the high-powered Mustangs offense, limited them to under 200 total yards. And this Houston team, Greg, this Houston team that won 11 straight. And they do this to them here. So impressive. And now they'll get the opportunity to try their hand against one of the all-time great programs, more than likely, in Alabama during what's been a dynasty that's been almost unlike anything we've seen at the college level in its history. What a fitting way to finish this season here at Nippert. And what an exciting few weeks we had as we get ready to watch the first group of five team ever punch their ticket to the college football playoff. The playoff party has begun. Jones just tiptoes up the sideline, leaving 16 seconds until history. And they got the cameras out. They're celebrating with their fans, and Fickle is coaching right to the end. And we said it earlier, for all those teams of the past, for that Tulane team in 98, and Utah before they were invited to the Power Five, and Chris Peterson and Kellen Moore and those Boise State teams, and UCF and Scott Frost, all those teams that thought this would be the feeling. It would be their turn at some point. It took this team, Cincinnati, to break through. Smith carries it ahead. He'll stop the clock for the moment. What did we say about Cinderella's? That college football never had that access point as the tempers are flaring. And fans are coming onto the field on the far side as they can't wait to storm this. So security's going to need to handle that. Cincinnati. They only allow 40,000 into tiny Nippert Stadium. Small in size, huge with volume right now. Listen to it. Coach and quarterback and a dream come true. We quoted Hoosiers at the beginning of the night. Win this for all the small schools that never had a chance to get here. Cincinnati's there. The Bearcats have won the American Athletic Conference Championship. The final score at Denver Stadium. Cincinnati 35. Houston. The group presentation will begin on the field shortly. A playoff party sea of humanity in Cincinnati. 
It'll become official tomorrow just after noon, but for now, they're already celebrating. The first non-Power 5 conference team that'll soon find out they are in the playoff. Here's Katie. Glad they're leaving. Thank you, Tess. Coach Fickle, you remain perfect. 13-0, second AAC title. Describe the moment. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, coming out of halftime, I, those seniors, they did an unbelievable job. Desmond Ritter, they didn't have to do anything at halftime. Those guys took over and said, hey, this is on us. And uh, they came out and proved it. What did you think of that third quarter? That, that's what we're capable of. And, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't always happen, but when, when things start rolling and the defense starts playing, the offense is playing, complimentary football, we're really tough to stop. Why is this team deserving of playing in a college football playoff? Because they've done everything they've been asked to do. Uh, we weren't worried about that. We wanted to win a championship. And I kept telling them, said, you take care of the stuff on the field. Everything else take care of itself. This is a really good football team. It deserves everything. Jerome Ford had an amazing day, as did Alec Pierce. But what does your quarterback standing behind you mean to this program? He's everything. Um, what he's come from and where he's gone, ups and downs. And, and it's not a lot of downs. I know because he's won an incredible amount of football games. But the pressure he's put upon himself and the way he's developed, uh, he's an unbelievable, not just player, but person and everything. Congratulations. I'll see you at this tri stage. Thank you. They got a trophy to collect. And they've got plans to make, like Friday, December 31st, for the CFP National Semifinal. Coach said Desmond Ritter, he's everything. Katie? How does this feel? You're an American title champion. You finished 13-0, and you're likely headed to the college football playoff in your last season as a Bearcat. Yeah, um, this is why I came back. All these, all these people right here, you know, this fan base is amazing. The city of Cincinnati is amazing, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. What'd you think of that third quarter? Uh, you know, we had to come out with a fast start, obviously. Um, we did. We was able to put it on them. Our old linemen did a phenomenal job. Um, and they just kept pounding away, pounding away, pounding away. What do you think of all these fans chanting CFP? Yeah, uh, for the first time, for sure. Yeah, now we're on to another one. So we're going to take it one game at a time, but now we're going to win a national championship. You've got more work to do, but when you think of your time spent here in Cincinnati, what are you most proud of? Just the brotherhood, just the culture. Um, like they said, undefeated. We haven't lost here at Nipper. A lot of thanks to these guys and girls around us for being just an amazing um, atmosphere, just creating, you know, a great energy for all of us to play in. We couldn't ask for anything more. Who do you want to play? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. We'll play anyone. As long as we're playing football, that's all we care about. I love it. Congratulations, Desmond. Thank you. Well, there's going to be football to play for that young man who now has 44 career wins. 44. Great. That's number three in the all-time history of college football. Desmond Ritter. Just amazing. Amazing the scene. Amazing the goal. And on the other side, the disappointment after what's been an incredible season for Houston. Doesn't take anything away from their accomplishment. Amazing year for Dana Holgerson. Houston's not going anywhere, but this is Cincinnati's night. This is Cincinnati's season, and the dream season continues. It was 14-13 at the half. A Houston team that came in red hot with 11 straight wins. But the defense stepped up in that third quarter. A defense that had 12 tackles for loss. Eight sacks today. And in that third quarter, Greg, the Cincinnati defense was only on the field for 11 plays. That's what they limited Houston's offense to. Negative six yards, an interception, three sacks in that third quarter alone. It's absolutely dominant. And you heard Luke Fickle say, those guys, those seniors, they stepped up. Said, it's on us. And they completely controlled the line of scrimmage. Just constant pressure on Clayton Toon. He was feeling the heat. They were bringing blitzes. They were getting home with only three guys rushing. And then, of course, a massive interception by DeBlanco that set up the second score of the third quarter for the Bearcats. Like I said, they could pour it on you in a hurry. And they were at their very best there in the third quarter of this football game.
They're singing deep into the night. It has begun. 35 to 20, they're the American champions. They will find out officially tomorrow that they're in the college football playoff. We asked the question, can Cincinnati throw their best playoff punch knowing it was win and you're in? It was a knockout punch. They floored them in the second half, and it is time to get the hardware. To Katie in the trophy presentation. so much and now with me to present the American Athletic Conference football champion trophy is Commissioner Mike Oresco thank you Katie first I want to congratulate Dana Holgerson and the Houston Cougars on a great season and appearing in the championship game much credit to them. And now, I want to present the championship trophy to Luke Fickle and the Cincinnati Bearcats. This, this is an, an historic night in Cincinnati. And tomorrow, we're all hoping it leads to a birth in the playoff. Congratulations, Luke. tonight we're just so happy to have to be able to do this in front of all of our fans all of our supporters especially our students it's a great time to be a bad bearcat congratulations enjoy this how about that bearcat and now for the presentation of the 2021 american football championship most outstanding player award with 187 yards, two touchdowns, the most outstanding player for the 2021 American Football Championship is Jerome Ford. How would you describe winning an American title tonight and putting yourself and your team in the college football playoff? Uh, it was great. Man, a few words. We'll give him a round of applause. Congratulations to the Cincinnati Bearcats, to the fans, to Houston for making it to this championship game. Enjoy this moment, guys. It's yours. Jerome Ford. 187 yards and two touchdowns. Jerome Ford, who started his career at a certain college. He was with the Alabama Crimson Tide. And he transfers to Cincinnati. And if things hold up with the score we're seeing in the SEC championship, we most likely will have a number one Alabama against a number four Cincinnati as a national semifinal in Ford Old Claim against his old team. Been a long time coming for this day. We said it earlier. 
This is not a sport that allows for Cinderella's. This is not the stuff of March Madness. The access point, the portal was never there. Yeah. They created it. They did. They pushed their way through and the stars aligned. They had to. You had to have some things happen in the Pac-12. You had to have Oregon yeah. with a couple losses. You have to have a two-loss Big 12 champion more often than not. And you have to have a legitimate win against a team that's also knocking on the college football playoff door. They had all those things happen. But the biggest thing is they took care of business. They came in knowing that every single week they were going to get the opponent's best shot. They lived to tell the tale. Even after they struggled in the middle of the season, they found a way to play their best football at the most important points of the season. Just couldn't be more proud for this fan base and for Group of Five programs throughout. You can do it. To see it happen, it can be done. You need help, but it can be done. Now, this is not the end. This is the beginning. What you do from this point forward could further solidify the argument that the group of five always deserves a chance. Cincinnati has to play well in the semifinal, and I think they will against whoever it is they draw. 40,000 people here. Every square inch of Nippert was packed and rocking. Probably going to be 100,000 years from now that will say and tell the tale that they were here. Cincinnati will find out officially tomorrow that they are in the college football playoff, the first non-Power 5 team to do so. Next up is the Subway ACC Championship game, Pitt and Wake Forest. For our entire crew, I am Joe Tessitore, thanking you for watching. Let's send you back to the studio. What a scene here in Cincinnati. They have done it.